for truth telling and passion. The faculty's only concern during Lisa's time at the seminary was how little sleep she seemed to need. She now serves as a member of our board of trustees. This body of Christ, St. David's and Good Shepherd in Corpus Christi and other parts of the body of Christ have examined her, interviewed her, examined her, ratified, confirmed her to be ordained tonight as a priest in the church. In the season of Advent in 2009, the church sings, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. And out beyond these walls of this church, in the world there are overwhelming needs for food, for safety, for respite from war and protection from enemies. The world is crowded with people and there is not enough. Not enough food, not enough medicine and doctors and equipment for all the people who are sick. Not enough money in the budget, not enough money in the endowment to maintain the budget. People are hungry and they're hurting for lack of work, not just for the bread that work can buy, but isolated from what work is, companionship and purpose. People are hungry for food, and they're hungry for meaning. And so, amidst these overwhelming needs, we in this beautiful church tonight do a comparatively small thing. We ordain one person. We ordain Lisa a priest. Overwhelming need was facing Jesus and Philip and Andrew at the city of Tiberias when the crowds were gathering. The kids would start to fuss first, but then by evening everyone would be miserable and furious. The president or the king or the leader or the teacher is expected to provide. Where are we going to buy bread for all these people to eat? They calculate the requirements and the resources and conclude six months' wages wouldn't even make a dent in it. Leaders know this responsibility, the responsibility to feed. The people of Israel trusted Moses to cross the Red Sea, which was really crazy, and then set out across the desert, and now the people were all starving and more than fussy. Moses had to provide for them. They were hungry, and they had forgotten the point of it all. Where were they going anyway, and why? Besides presidents and kings, those who know this responsibility to feed are mothers. People show up for dinner, and the cupboard is bare. Now, my mother can come up with dinner even if there's no food that I can find, and I bet Lisa Mason can do that too. <laughs> but not being able to feed your own children is agony, and it arouses that intense compassion in your gut. Many, many years ago, my husband Frank and I had our first child, she daughter, Rachel. And when she was four weeks old, we had to go to a wedding of very close friends of ours. I had agreed to do this wedding at a church in Lake George, New York. It was the first thing I did as a priest after I was also a mother. So we flew to Lake George, and we got in a car, and we were shown to our log cabin on the lake. I was nursing Rachel, but it was okay because I had given Frank powdered formula and bottles and our little girl, and I got a lift 
to the church around, quite a ways around the lake to another part of the lake shore to run the rehearsal. Now, while I was taking care of misbehaving groomsmen and <laughs> tense family members, Frank was at the cabin. He went into the kitchen to make Rachel her food and read a sign by the sink that said, please don't use the drinking water. It comes from the lake. Drinking the water will put you at risk for beaver fever. <laughs> so there he was on the, with powdered formula, bottles, and his four-week-old daughter next to a wide and beautiful contaminated lake. Rachel cried and cried and cried some more and she cried louder. She needed to be fed and Frank wanted to meet her needs and to feed her. And he knew the keen pain that mothers know of physically yearning to feed your child. The desire to feed is as intense as the hunger of the child. And I knew that keen pain too when I got back from the church to the cabin and took Rachel into my arms. I had to help Frank recover too. <laughs> from utter frustration and helplessness and fury. And now when either of us say to each other, Lake George, <laughs> we know what we need. Immense responsibility, extreme parenting, and impossible task. Where are we going to buy food for all these people? Now, Moses suffered like I did, like Lisa does, like Frank does. For scripture describes Moses as a mother to the people of Israel. Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised to their ancestors? Jesus is surrounded by a huge hungry crowd by the Sea of Tiberias. And all Andrew can find is a boy with five barley loaves and two fish. A small thing. A young boy. And even the fish are little. What are they among so many people? So then we know what happened. Jesus took the loaves. He thanked God. He passed out the bread and fish, and it kept coming. To the littlest kids first, and the wounded people, and the lepers, and the fathers and mothers. Jesus kept giving it, and it didn't run out. It was like the jug of oil of Elijah, the jar of meal and the bread of Elisha, the copious, unending wine at that memorable wedding at Cana. Jesus kept giving bread and fish, and he didn't stop until they, every single one of them, had enough. Until they were full. Until they were satisfied. Full enough for the kids to fall asleep on their mother's lap. God provided manna for Moses' children in the wilderness. It was sweet. Some of the rabbis said it was sweet like mother's milk, and it didn't run out. It was enough. It was daily bread. So Jesus here by the sea does what Moses does. He does a sign, a sign that God provides, gives, and feeds. He reminds them of what they have known in every generation. Jesus does what divine wisdom does. She creates. She creates the barley blowing in the field and the seas teeming with fish. She offers bread and flowing water and wine to all who come to her. 
O come, thou wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. This giant open air picnic of bread and fish is the Eucharist in the Gospel of John. It's not indoors with 12.